So Walmart just released some new Pro tablets using their on-brand. In case you didn't notice, we already covered the 10.1 inch. So in today's video, we're gonna cover the eight inch version of the On Tablet Pro. And I'll leave a link in the description below with current pricing and more information. Some of the specs here on the back of the box, 2.0 gigahertz octa-core processor. This also comes with two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. The resolution is 1280 by 800 and it does have a 4500 milliamp hour battery which they're advertising 10 hour battery life. This also takes a micro SD card for storage expansion. It also has a 5 megapixel front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear facing camera. Currently this is $99 on Walmart's website, but I'll leave a link to that in the description below. There's also a bonus of $10 for Walmart ebooks. Coupon codes for Voodoo, Walmart eBooks, and Grocery Pickup. That's definitely got some weight to it. Product Guide. Shockingly, this is USB-C charging, and they do include a charging brick. It's got that dark gray metal looking back, just like on the 10 inch. Two speakers on the bottom on each side of the charging port headphone jack and micro SD card at the top, power and volume buttons there on the right hand side. And the rear facing camera is up in the left hand corner on the back. Then you got the front facing camera right in the center towards the top. So overall, I really like the build quality on this, very similar to the 10 inch. And maybe that's what they're talking about when they say pro, just because it's a little better build quality than last year's versions. Here's a quick size comparison next to the Fire HD8. You can see it's not quite as tall as the Fire HD8, but the width is pretty much the same, maybe with slightly smaller bezels. You can swipe left on the home screen to get to the Google News Feed. You just swipe up to get to all your apps. You can see down here at the bottom, they added a Walmart button, which is just a shortcut to Sam's Club, Walmart, the Walmart grocery pickup, and Voodoo. You can also add other apps to this as well. Pretty simplified notification shade with not a lot to choose from. You've got screencast, airplane mode, battery saver, auto rotate, do not disturb, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Pretty typical stuff in the settings here. This does have digital well-being and parental controls. Screen lock choices are none, swipe, pattern, pen and password. This is on Android 10 with January 5th, 2020 security update. After initial setup, it is using about 22% of the 32 gigabytes available. So overall, this tablet is actually pretty decent at playing PUBG Mobile. And it even let me use my iPega controller, which surprises me because sometimes that will use more resources when you're connected to a controller through Bluetooth. The graphic settings for PUBG Mobile was the lowest with smooth frame rates. And yeah, you'll notice from some of these clips how the trees don't really populate until you get a little bit closer or just things in the distance really. But still, I ended up winning this match. So yeah, you can play games like PUBG Mobile and also Asphalt 9 played fairly decent on this. You can tell just the slightest of hesitation every now and then, but nothing that would make them unplayable. Now keep in mind that because this is a pretty cheap tablet, it's not gonna be super fast as you're moving around within the software. So don't expect like iPad performance on something this cheap. But when playing games on this, it's actually pretty decent if you're just looking for something cheap that can also play games. I'll go ahead and show you some more game footage just so you can get an idea of what it looks like.
if you're wondering about battery life on this tablet. I did a battery drain test with the screen brightness at 100% and it lasted right around five and a half hours. And then to charge this tablet back up from zero to 100% took about two and a half hours. I just did a quick Geekbench score on this just to see what it come up with. For the single core, it was 150. Multi-core, 806, which is, which is actually pretty low for a tablet. But again, this is only $99, so I wasn't really expecting too much more. Let me give you a quick sample of what the speakers sound like. Your SIM and micro SD card slot is down at the bottom next to the charging port. The one downside to this phone is it only has one bottom firing speaker. I wish they would have added one where the earpiece is. Okay, so yeah, even though there's two speakers on this, to me they seem really quiet. Now when using Netflix, obviously you're only going to get standard definition on playback since this is only a 720p display. Same thing on YouTube, you can get up to 720p at 60 frames per second. But I've got to say, even watching videos on YouTube at only 720p, or even on Netflix, at this size, it's not really going to be that big of a difference, especially when you're only paying about $100. Now obviously, most people aren't going to buy this tablet for the cameras. The shutter speed on here actually isn't that bad. It's just the color is way off. Now you'll notice there's really not a lot you can do with a camera app. You do have a few things here in the settings, such as white balance, ISO, anti-flicker, the camera app on this one and the 10.1 inch version are what I would call very minimalistic where you just don't have a lot to choose from. You basically have picture or video and then a few settings to choose from. Now the HDR on here does help a little bit, but yeah, it's still pretty bad. So here's a few examples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what you can expect from this tablet. And while in my opinion, this definitely is not a pro tablet by any stretch of the imagination. Even though the back is metal, you're still gonna get fingerprints on there. Not to mention, you can get rid of that Walmart button down at the bottom. You can switch it to gestures, or you can even just download a launcher like this Microsoft one. So unless you're wanting to buy a cheap tablet for something like Fortnite, I wouldn't get this because it's not compatible, but it actually does a decent job at playing most other games. Now would I choose this over something from Samsung or even Lenovo? Probably not, but it's still a decent tablet if you want to buy something for kids or if you just want a cheap alternative to something like the Fire HD8. It definitely is a good budget tablet, especially if you want to get one for your kids and you don't want them to break your iPad. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.